Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alif Lam Mim Dhalikal kitabu la rayba fihi hudan lil Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa sallillahumma ala Sidra Muhammad, an-Nabi Unami wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma, wa hayyat lana min amrina rashada. Assalamu alaikum, uh, welcome to the second part of our short reflections on the inner dimensions of purification and prayer. And today is the second of these reflections, and inshallah we will be uh, reading from the uh, a section from Imam al-Ghazali's Ihyal al-Muddin, uh, the fourth book of that, Kitab Asrar As Salat, the book of the inner dimensions of prayer. In particular, we'll be looking at the section Fadilatul Khushur. So, in the first chapter of this book, Imam Ghazali outlines the merits of the different parts of the prayer, and we wanted to look at the merit of Al Khushur, the merit of uh, humble adoration. Al Khushur is a beautiful word. And it's a Quranic word. Allah Ta'ala says in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ That verily the believers are truly successful. They truly flourish. Uh, those who, when they are in their prayer, they are in a state of humble adoration of the Divine. And Imam Al-Ghazali places this section right after the section of Fadilat As-Sujood, the merit of Sajda, prostration which is, uh, according to some of our scholars, the most important part of the prayer. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in an authentic hadith, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونَ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدُ That the closest the servant is to his Lord is while in the state of prostration. And uh, Allah Ta'ala states in the last verse of Surah Al-Fatih, describing uh, the people that are with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the noble companions, Allah be pleased with them, and all of his followers of the Ummah, till the end of time, سِيمَاهُمْ fi وُجُوهِهِمْ min أَثِرِ sujud That their distinguishing mark is on their faces from the traces of prostration. And Imam al-Ghazali says the most correct interpretation of this is nur al-khushu' is the spiritual light of humble adoration that it begins in the heart and emanates upon the face itself. So it's not a physical mark on the forehead according to according to Imam al-Ghazali, but rather it's a spiritual light uh, that dawns on the face because of the beautiful khushur in the heart. And uh, we know that Allah Ta'ala has revealed an, an entire surah called An-Nur, Surah An-Nur, in which Allah Ta'ala has said, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and earth. And if, according to the hadith, the servant is closest to Allah in sajda, then we can infer that there would be a tremendous illumination, that the we are closest to nura samawati wal ard. When we are in a state of prostration, we are closest to the light of the heavens and earth, Allah Himself. And so Ghazali, what does he call this? Nur al khushur the light, the spiritual light of humble adoration. And that uh, it, one of the early sages of Islam, Hakim al tirmidhi he said, about remembrance of God, ma min nurin fil qalb. There is never a light in the heart, illa wa ma'hu rahmatu min Allah Taala bi qadri dalik. Except that with that light is mercy from Allah Most High, commensurate to the light. Fama dam al abdu fi dhikr. So so long that the servant is in a state of remembering Allah, fa rahmatu nazir tun alehi kal matar. Then mercy descends upon the individual like rain. وَإِذَا غَفَلْ قَحَدْ But when the person is inattentive to Allah, then there is a spiritual drought in the heart. And so, sajda and the salat by extension is a time of remembrance of God. This is the ultimate aim and objective of the salat, is to make remembrance and to be in the presence of Allah Ta'ala, uh, not heedlessness and inattention, inattention to Allah. And so, how does Imam al-Ghazali begin this section? He begins with a proof from the Book of Allah of the connection between Salat and Dhikr. 
from Surah At-Taha. He says, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Allah, mighty and majestic states in Surah Taha, established the prayer for my remembrance. And so the purpose of the prayer is the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. This is khushu' humble adoration. And Ghazali cites another verse of the Qur'an from Surah Al-A'raf, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And do not be amongst those who are heedless and inattentive to Allah Ta'ala. And in this section he cites several examples from the Prophet ﷺ from the early pious predecessors of Islam, we will read a few of them. وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, that the Prophet said in a hadith that's in uh, Bukhari and Muslim, مَنْ صَلَّى رَكَعَتَيْنْ لَمْ يُحَدِّثْ نَفْسَهُ فِيهِمَا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever prays two cycles of prayer while not talking to oneself therein, then all of their previous sins are forgiven. And so uh, the chattering of the mind and the wandering of thoughts in the valleys of our, our, our worldly concerns is something we need to shut off. And the more we're capable and adept at shutting off the wandering of the mind during the prayer, the more we will find divine mercy and illumination therein, inshallah. Another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, a man asked him for advice and he said, وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, أَوْصَاهُ وَإِذَا صَلَّيْتَ فَصَلِّ صَلَاةَ مُوَدِّعْ And when you pray, pray like someone bidding farewell. And Imam Ghazali clarifies, he says, أَيْ مُوَدِّعْ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمُوَدِّعْ لِهَوَاهُ وَمُوَدِّعْ لِعُمْرِهِ سَائِرٌ إِلَى مَوْلَاهُ Namely, someone bidding farewell to their ego and someone bidding farewell to their pride and some, someone bidding farewell to all their worldly concerns and rather journeying and focusing on their master, God Almighty. وَيُرْوَى عَنْ مُسْلِمْ إِبْنِ يَسَارِ أَنَّهُ كَانَ إِذَا أَرَادَ الصَّلَاةِ قَالَ لِأَهْلِهِ تَحَدَّثُوا أَنْتُمْ فَإِنِّي لَسْتُ أَسْمَعُكُمْ And uh, Imam al-Ghazali cites one of the early pious predecessors, Muslim ibn Yasar. He was a student of Ibn Abbas and Ibn Umar, Allah be pleased with them all. So he was a great tabi'i imam. He was a great jurist and saintly figure of Basra in early Iraq. And he died in the year 100 after Hijrah. He used to say when he, would, uh, uh, when he was about to pray uh, in his home, he would tell his family, go ahead and talk because I won't be able to hear you. So he would be so immersed and engrossed in uh, his remembrance of Allah during the prayer that distractions and noises in the house would not be of any consequence to him. وَكَانَ عَلِيُّ إِبْنَ أَبِي طَالِبِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَكَرَمَ وَجْهُ إِذَا حَضْرَ وَقْتُ الصَّلَاةِ يَتَزَلْزَلُ وَيَتَلَوَّنُ وَجْهُهُ And Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, may Allah ennoble his face and be pleased with him. When the time of prayer came, his body would start to shake and his, the color of his face would change. فَقِيلَ لَهُ مَا لَكَ يَا أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And so the people around him would say, What's wrong with you, O commander of the faithful? So this is when he was the head of state of the entire Muslim empire. Look at, look at his uh, spiritual uh, station with his Lord. Allah be pleased with him. Uh, so he would say, جَاءَ وَقْتُ amana, The time of a great trust, a divine trust has come. عَرَدَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ God has offered this trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains. فَأَبَيْنَ أَنْ يَحْمِلْنَهَا وَأَشْفَقْنَ مِنْهَا But they refused to bear it and they were wary of it. This is citing a verse of the Qur'an from Surah Al-Ahzab. وَحَمَلْتُهَا But I have borne it. I shall bear it now. وَيُرْوَى عَنْ عَلِيِّ بِنَ Hussein, And uh, it's also related from the grandson of Sayyidina Ali through Imam Hussein, Ali ibn Hussein, and the great-grandson of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أَنَّهُ كَانَ إِذَا تَوَضَّأَ That when he would make wudu, the uh, ritual purification before the prayer, إِسْفَرَّ لَوْنُهُ The color of his face would change. He would uh, look pale. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ أَهْلُهُ And his family would ask him, مَا هَذَا الَّذِي يَعْتَرِيكَ عِنْدُ الْوُدُوء What is this that is affecting you while you perform your ritual washing? فَيَقُولُ He would respond, 
أتدرون بين يدي من أريد أن أقوم Do you realize in whose presence I'm about to stand? ويروى عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما And it's related from Ibn Abbas, Allah be pleased with him and his father, أنه قال that he said, and this is taken from the Israeliyat, the traditions of the Israelites, قال داود صلى الله عليه وسلم that the noble prophet David, peace be upon him, would say في مناجاته in his intimate discourse and dialogue with his Lord, إلهي من يسكن بيتك وممن تتقبل الصلاة O oh my Lord, who resides in your house, and from whom do you accept their ritual prayer? فَأَوْحَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ So Allah Ta'ala, God Almighty, revealed to Prophet David, Ya Dawood, O oh David, إِنَّمَا يَسْكُنُ بَيْتِي وَأَقْبَلُ الصَّلَاةَ مِنْهُ The only one who resides in my house, and from whom uh, I accept their prayers, مَنْ تَوَادَ لِعَظَمَتِي is the one that is humble, in front of my majesty. وَقَطَعَ نَهَارُهُ بِذِكْرِي And who spends his day in my, in my remembrance. وَكَفَّ نَفْسَهُ عَنِ الشَّهَوَاتِ And withholds his ego from lowly desires, base desires. مِنْ أَجْلِي يُطْعِمُ الْجَائِعِ وَيُؤْوِ الْغَرِيبِ وَيَرْحَمُ الْمُصَابِ For my sake does he feed the poor and shelter the uh, homeless and have mercy on those that are afflicted with tribulation. فَذَٰلِكَ الَّذِي يُضِيءُ نُورُهُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ كَالشَّمْسِ That is the one truly that his light shines in the heavens like the sun. And we began the reflection that this light refers to the Nur al-Khushur. That's the chapter we're in. It's the light of humble adoration of the divine during the ritual prayer. And notice from this beautiful anecdote, the beautiful narration, that such people that are truly realized uh, spiritually in their prayers, that it spills out into society through good, good works of serving and helping the needy, helping people in need, and uh, uh, serving the poor. In da'ani labbaytuhu, if he supplicates to me, I, I respond immediately. Wa in sa'lani a'taytuhu, and if such a person asks of me, I give them. أجعل له في الجهل حلما وفي الغفلة ذكرا وفي الظلمة نورا. And for such a person, I give for them, I give to them in times of ignorance, clemency and forbearance, and in times of heedlessness, remembrance of the divine, and in times of darkness, great light. وإنما مثله في في الناس كالفردوس في أعلى الجنان. And the only fitting example of such a person amongst people, amongst fellow man, is like paradise itself compared to the earth. Such a person's rivers never go dry, and such a person's fruits never decay. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us illumined in such beautiful ways, uh, and to make us true heirs and inheritors of our pious predecessors and ultimately our noble and holy prophet وسلم, in both the outer and the inner dimensions of the ritual prayer and all of our worship. Wassalamu alaikum.